Hello, this is Freya Nemeth from Otherworldly, and I would like to welcome you to the 2024 Fantasy Fair and to the sim Thunus Bay, built by Contraption. And to uh, take a little look at this gorgeous underwater sim, um, Lovecraftian inspired is my feeling, I am going to be writing one of two fantastical beasts released by uh, Teagle for this year. You know, Teagle will release um, regular horses and dogs now throughout the year. But for Fantasy Fair, they always cook up some special mythological beast. And for this year, it is the Hippocampus, not seen here, and the Kelpie. And the Kelpie was, I mean, I love them both when I saw them first. Um, announced I may have squealed and when I saw them in the flesh I certainly squealed oh, the SL flesh then uh, but the kelpie you know dangerous creature uh, that's the one I um, immediately gravitated towards uh, he's um, he's a dangerous beastie let's look at his teeth and uh, in the mythology he will lure you to sit on his back um, often looking masquerading like a normal horse and then he'll get you to sit on his back and then you won't be able to get off and he'll run into the nearest lake and drown you and eat you hopefully after you've drowned but I'm not so sure when I see those teeth um, of course one way to ride a kelpie somewhat safely is to be a magical creature yourself and um, well I'm being a mer-virgin this year how I've been putting it because I've never done the mermaid thing in SL so when Brian offered the opportunity for bloggers to have her odyssey tale I jumped on it and um, decided to uh, see what it took to put a mer look together um, which I did with some accessories from um, uh, zoom in and have a better look at it I have a crown from Drunken Brocker. I have beautiful cough, uh, cuffs for my neck and my hands by Petrico. Uh, I have a pliers for the tail. Um, it's not just the creators that will make those, that you'll get those from uh, other vendors as well. Uh, and just, just like with the teagle horses, this is not the default skin. This is one but made by corn. I, I really want this black, super dangerous look for uh, for my Kelpie. And uh, the skin is by Fallen Gods, uh, one of the Draugr skins. Which I think gave us sufficiently. It kind of goes together with the scales, blends in a little bit with the scaling. Let's pretend I didn't have that arm in the horsey, but you know, maybe you can stick your arms into Kelpies without them being too upset about it. <clears throat> so, um, you can get this stunning Kelpie for uh, 1900 for the no copy version. Uh, that's always the um, case with the special editions. Or 6000 if you want a whole army of copy Kelties. Um, Kelpies, not Kelties, uh, filling up your um, your oceans. I don't have, actually have my own ocean at home, so um, one Kelpie and one Hippocampus will probably do the trick for me. But I thought I'd give you a better look at how this sleek, beautiful hunter moves through the waters of this uh, very pretty sim. And as you can see, he can rear up as well, and then he will start swimming with his powerful tail, propelling him through the water. And there is a, definitely something of the hunter about him when he goes through. Uh, he comes around. You don't want that one after you. If you're having a nice little swim and then suddenly... Suddenly this fellow comes after you, see he can dive. And here he's going to swim in among the... Uh, um, I was going to say sunken city, but I don't think it is a sunken city. I think this city was built, built for underwater creatures. Uh, certainly the fish symbolism suggests that, and also I think suggests a, a Lovecraftian uh, angle to it. 
it's um it's quite the amazing uh there dive down a little further there's schools of fish fleeing from us uh there's kelp everywhere and you can see he can get quite speedy he's um it reminds me of one of those leopard seals um that will just cut through the water and uh on the hunt for his prey but yeah it's definitely a, a very mystical underwater uh, city here and uh some uh, cool hidden nooks and crannies um, outside of the uh, shopping area where you can uh, <clears throat> explore and uh, take photos these little sort of underwater plateaus and um, definitely a, a place to photo if you are a mer creature and uh, want to have some cool and unusual backdrops or if you want to take your Kelpie for a ride. It's the perfect place for that. He really looks at home with the uh, kelp decorations, uh, his kelp mane and the kelp tangled in his fins and all that. Patrolling around, making sure there's nothing disturbing his underwater kingdom. Let's see if we can get over here as well. Sometimes I just slam into the sim edges and then I can't go any further or slam into a building. Um, you increase the speed on the Teagle Pets by pushing the forward button twice and occasionally I uh, forget myself and uh, yes, it gets a little bit lively. And you can calm it down by pushing the back button instead and come to a nice halt here in the front of this building. I have noticed that when I use one of the um, camera presets built in it doesn't seem to hold on to the camera smoothing it's a little jerkier than I wanted for the video uh, but I hope this gives you a sense of the um, how cool this Kelpie is and how cool the tail is um, give you a better look at that too while I'm at it I am using a a HUD here to give some lighting on me just to show off the uh, the materials because that gives a superbly fishy look it's uh, that's really cool with the scaling and everything uh, definitely uh, definitely very cool and I will see what else I can come up with uh, doing with them um, now that I've um, now that I'm a mer maid again, and not just a, a mer virgin, um, and then I wanted to um, get a little serious for, for uh, the end of this video because, after all, the, um, the fantasy fair is um, was conceived of as um, a fundraiser for um, Relay for Life and the American Cancer Society. And I don't tend to, it's nothing that I've brought up previously when I blogged the fair that much. It's, um, I've kind of felt like I haven't been affected enough in a sense. Uh, I mean, everyone knows somebody who's passed on from cancer. My, my grandmother did, but I was quite small, so I don't really remember her. And uh, one of my uncles did as well. But it's been a little bit more at the remove in, it's not, fortunately so far hit my closest family uh, except in one way and I guess I felt a little weird about bringing it up because um, I've had boxers all my life and uh, my husband and I have boxers and boxers as the breed are unfortunately very cancer prone and uh, we've lost uh, several of our, of our boys much too early um, you know six six and a half eight um, the, the last one was from uh, from a brain tumor that he um, he suddenly had seizures uh, on New Year's Eve and uh, had to pass on the, the next day and it was very rough and uh, we um, we have a project in in the boxer club where we we raise money for uh, research into uh, cancer on boxers and they in turn those uh, um, those vets collaborate with um, uh, doctors on the human side 
because often there are actually a lot of similarities where, where dogs, studying dogs can provide a lot of benefits for cancer research on humans. And it's not like you're not having them as test subject, it's just you're trying to help them and in doing so you may be able to advance um, treatments for humans as well. Um, and uh, I was reminded of this very much yesterday when uh, a close friend of mine, her uh, her boxer, passed away. Uh, she wasn't very young. Um, a lot of older dogs do get cancer eventually, like just like a lot of older people. It's um, it's to some extent natural, but it, it went very quickly from her being extremely lively and and, and vital for her age and. Uh, um, it was a dog that we um, had in our home several times, and she was a great friend with our boys. And she um, she leaves a big hole after her, and uh, so I kind of wanted to dedicate this video to her, uh, to uh, Ruth, as she was called by uh, by her owner, uh, the uh, you know sweetest, craziest uh, boxer I uh, I have ever known. She. Uh, she was completely wild even when she turned a veteran at eight years old as we say and uh, she she did she did not know that she was a veteran and she was very nice to everything and 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 everybody she got along with all dogs and it's a big loss and i think that um, and i hope that the research is going to move on on with dogs and then that that will help humans in turn and uh will um We'll be able to make some strides to uh, save both future puppies and, and people. So, um, so yeah, that's um, that's my little story for for now. And uh, I'll probably be back with I'll certainly be back with more posts, uh, perhaps some more video as well. And uh, I hope you will enjoy the fair and. Uh, help uh, raise uh, lots and lots of money for, for the research. Until next time.